Welcome to Big Cove Presbyterian Church. My name is Pastor Kim. Glad to have you here out there. Glad to have you all here. Yesterday we had a wonderful celebration and what we did was we had a community day here and everyone volunteered and we met people in the community and it was fabulous. So we're thrilled to be here again on this beautiful day of the Lord to worship him and celebrate. So um, I believe we're ready to worship the Lord. Is that correct? Yes. Please join me for the call to worship found in your bulletin. Are any among you suffering? Let us pray. Are any cheerful? Let us sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? Let us turn to each other for God's healing touch. The prayer of faith is what we need. God will lift us up. Please bow your heads for the prayer praise. Eternal God, you create us and you rescue us. Be here with us now. Help us know how much we need you. Teach us that no other power can support us like your power. As you share your power with us, teach us to be Christ to the world, proclaiming your reign for all people. As you lavish your love upon us, help us receive that love and offer it to the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now comes the time in our service when we share our thoughts with God, share our prayers with God, share our sins with God, share whatever we need with God. And particularly now is the time when we think about the difficult times we've had or the hard times that we have not done maybe what we wanted to do or should have done. Oftentimes it's sometimes when you say something and you want to take it back, right? So... Instead of actually saying things together today, we're just going to sing a song. And as we sing this song, I invite you to lift up your things to God. Whatever's in your heart, just lift it up to God. We're going to sing a song that I think most of you know. And we're going to sing that song prayerfully.
many of you know what the words kumbaya mean? Come by here. Asking God to come by here. I get feedback whenever I stand near that. So we ask God to come by here to listen to our prayers. We ask God to come by here to feel what's in our hearts. We ask God to be wherever we are. And so we've asked God to come by here to our hearts today. And if there's anything in your heart that feels full and it's hard to let go of because during the day and during the week you've had just a rough time of being right with God or right with someone else, I want you to know that by His grace, by His grace, we are forgiven. Amen. I will be reading from the message don't worry or fret. Instead of worrying, pray. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers. Let God know your concerns before you know it. A series of God filled with God's holiness will be all through you. Everything comes together for the good and will come and settle you down. It's wonderful. It happens when God, Christ displaces worry in the center of your life. Beautiful. Prayer. We'll be reading today from James 5, 13 to 20 about prayer, as you'll be able to read here. James 5, 13 to 20, New Revised Standard Version. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them with oil and the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain, and for three years and six months it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters... If anyone among you wanders from the truth and is brought back by another, you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. The word of the Lord. Now this is the final sermon in the sermon series on the book of James. And as you noticed, it focuses on prayer. Now last week we saw that the passage was directed toward a community. It's no different this week. The text today has a very community-based theological nature. Listen to this again. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them. James emphasizes that the members of the community bear a mutual responsibility for each other. How do we accomplish that? How do we accept that? Well, first, friends, I think we need to know each other, don't we? We need to know each other. And something I learned when I lived in Maryland, I thought was kind of strange, people really kept to themselves. Like, many didn't go outdoors. They'd retreat in their havens inside. And in today's world, you know, there aren't a lot of front porches like they were in the olden days where a buggy or a horse or wagon would drive by your front porch. You had an opportunity then to visit with the people and ask how your neighbor was, how they fared, what was ailing them. And the news wasn't just news. It gave people something to think about for the weeks and to pray about. Often, though, it's hard today to get someone to share beyond the pleasantries of, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. Usually it's just a pleasantry, right? But James says that those who are faring well bear responsibility to help those who are not faring well. Yet, friends, it's a bit of a two-way street. Those who are struggling or ill or have the need need to share their struggles, not just assume a pleasantry, how are you? It might be really heartfelt, and the asker might really want to know how you are. What these passages in James imply is that the sharing is a vital aspect of our Christian community, that we be involved in each other's lives, helping each other in our physical and spiritual journeys. When we lived in Maryland, after I graduated from seminary, I was looking for a church, and I was invited to preach at my home church. It was Sunday morning, and I was getting ready. I had my clothes all laid out. I was going to practice my sermon one more time. Suddenly, there were sirens outside of our house, big ones. 
I looked out the front window and I saw, you know, an ambulance, a fire truck, and a police car at our neighbor's house next door. Anne and her husband lived there and they were in their 60s. Now we knew Anne kind of in passing. She didn't come outside very often. We met her when the woman who used to own our house moved out. But when there was a snowstorm, we'd go over to Anne's house and snow plow her driveway for her because her husband was in a wheelchair. We didn't know her husband very well at all. Because of the wheelchair, he went into the garage directly and right into the house without ever seeing us. We'd lived there for eight years and we never saw him or talked to him, not once. When I saw the ambulance and all the other emergency vehicles, I raced next door. I was stopped at the door by a policeman who was really standing guard, right? Officer, I said, is everything all right? I'm a neighbor. Do you know the lady who lives here? He asked. Well, yes, I know her. She's my neighbor, I said adamantly, realizing in the same breath, I really didn't know her at all, just a little bit, right? Well, maybe you can help the situation then, he said, and let me pass. I went into Anne's kitchen for the first time ever, and there she sat with policemen and EMTs all around her. She saw me and practically screamed, Oh my God, Kim! And she collapsed in my arms. Her husband had died in the night in the kitchen, and she'd come downstairs to find him gone. What a shock. And I didn't know him, and I barely knew her. I didn't know her children's names or who to call. I didn't know what to do except to hold her as she wept. And when her daughter arrived, I left and went to church to deliver a sermon. You know, it just felt so funny. And we prayed for Anne and her family, and we prayed for peace and comfort, but I really didn't know how prayer would help them. How does prayer help us? Well, James mentioned several ways that prayer is a saving grace. Prayer has the power to heal, the power to forgive, the power to give you what you need, the power to be community to one another. But Max Licato says, prayer pushes us through life's slumps, propels us over the humps, and pulls us out of the dumps. Prayer is the oomph we need to get the answers we seek. But mostly, friends, I believe we use prayer often in crisis, when we need something, when we lose something, when we need healing or need grace, we reach out to God in times of trouble. And then what happens when prayers don't get answered the way we want them to? When a child isn't spared or a loved one, when we cry out in the night about an abusive spouse, an addicted sister, a troubled parent, what about when we think God doesn't hear us? My friend, Pastor Rosemary, went to North Carolina with her husband and was told by a few friends that they really needed to visit a certain chapel next to a lake. When they arrived, they were told that during the height of COVID, the chapel was open all the time. But now, not so much. Interesting, isn't it? Listen to how she responded to this in her blog. The closed chapel made me wonder how much we tend to use God, just like we sometimes use other people. When we're in need of something bigger than us or beyond our control, we cry out for help and healing, solace and sympathy. When the crisis is over, we often forget our relationship with the divine until another crisis or hard time hits. We forget that we were invited to a two-way relationship, one that includes awareness, intention, gratitude, and love from both partners instead of a relationship where we treat the divine like a genie in a bottle. Genie in a bottle. Rub the side, right? It's an interesting image for me. Do we often treat God like a genie? Rub the side of the bottle, get what you want? Do we give anything in return? Do we build our relationship with the divine daily? And do we understand the incredible vast fabric of our omnipotent God? Prayer in response to prayer is hard to understand. I've been asked by many, why doesn't God hear me? Why haven't my prayers been answered? Why do I have to suffer more than other people? It's not fair. I was told that I needed to do was, all I needed to do was pray and God would supply me with what I needed. Why didn't that happen? It can really be hard because there's lots of need. My response to that is twofold. First, we often use prayer like a grocery list and we get disappointed when our need isn't met no matter how significant or insignificant the list. The list could be something as simple as the need for a parking space. How many of you have prayed for a parking space? All right, we have, right? right? Or finding a lost key to the car. Okay? But then the big ones like saving the life of a child with cancer. They're big, right? Not that these prayers are wrong, 
But assuming we can understand the divine will of God or the fabric of the universe or the spirit of the holy is arrogant. The holy operates in ways that are beyond us and beyond our understanding. The way one event or one death or one job loss affects the fabric of human movement and the threads of life all around us for generations. We can't predict, nor can we see. We often use prayer as a one-way street. Here's my need, Lord, please answer me. It's like the chapel door that Rosemary described that was closed to all coming in. What if God wants to come in? How do we invite God in? How do we do that? Well, there is a recipe. It's a guide to follow. It's a prayer that Jesus taught. When Jesus taught his disciples to pray, there are three opening lines that are significant. Our Father who's in heaven, hallowed be your name. Hallowed meaning sacred, holy, and blessed. So in other words, God who's in heaven, your name is sacred and a blessing to us. We praise your name. Thy kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is a reminder that we need to pray for God's plan in our lives and in the world, not necessarily our own plan. And we're to pray for God's will to be done, not so much our own desires first. That part comes second, though. Don't forget, there's a part in there, give us our daily bread, right? That allows us to petition God for our needs. Let's look at that recipe from Jesus gave for started, starting our prayer. What did he give us? Let's start it. God who's in heaven. Your name is sacred and a blessing to us. We praise you. We accept your plan in our lives and the world, not our own plan. How often do we pray when we start our petitions first? We start with petitions first and praise down here. God, hear my prayer. I need this. But not usually. God, you're amazing. You touch my life and surround me with love. Rosemary's words came back to haunt me. We forget that we're invited into a two-way relationship, one that includes awareness, intention, gratitude, and love from both partners instead of a relationship where we treat the divine like a genie in a bottle. I think that's an important message to take away from this passage today. Second lesson. We need to know our neighbors to help carry their burdens to God in prayer. It's a privilege to pray for people and with people, but we have to know them. Think about how much more powerful my praying for my neighbor Anne could have been if I'd really known her and her husband to be able to grieve with her instead of for her, right? Third lesson, that we need to know our God and be in relationship with our God in order for prayer to mean something and not just be praying to a genie in a bottle. Friends, we've been invited into relationship. And like any relationship, it's a two-way street. We need to keep the door to the chapel open. Invite God in just like God invites us in. And fourth lesson, we really can believe in the power of prayer. And I'm saying that right here. I believe that God is playing a part and has played a part with science in keeping several of our parishioners alive in their stage four cancer diagnoses. I believe that God has been an active part of my life through prayer and he moves in and around me as the Holy Spirit. Yet I also believe that God is just too big for me to put in a box and God works in ways that are beyond my comprehension. So, we just keep praying. And I believe we've been given a lesson on how to pray from the best, Jesus Christ. We've been given an amazing example on how to pray. The Lord's Prayer is one of the best examples we have. The beginning is full of praise, understanding, and reverence. We can't use God like a genie if we follow Jesus' instructions on how to pray. We have that beautiful praise. And then petition. Finally, we need to follow our hearts, don't we? We need to follow our hearts. Pray during times of stress and times of joy. Don't stop praying. Pray during times of chaos and times of thanksgiving and times of peace. And if you feel closer to God in the woods, then pray in the woods. If you feel closer to God in the shower, then pray in the shower. If you're closer to God when you play the Lord's Prayer, right, then pray the Lord's Prayer. Let's not shut our hearts to God, our hearts to our neighbors, or our hearts to the power of prayer, even if we've been disappointed. Let's try again and keep going and start fresh. God is a willing participant if we let God be. My friend Pastor Rosemary ends her blog on prayer in a way that is like a prayer. I'd like to close my today's sermon using her blog exit. It's profoundly simple. Friends, I would like my heart to be a chapel that is open 24 hours a day, inviting God in, not only in the difficult times, but in the peaceful as well. Amen.
Now comes the time in our service when we have prayers, friends at home. We've shared prayers here in our community. We'd like you to do the same. Know that when you're out there, you're not far from our hearts. Please type in, type in your prayers, and we'll be there to answer them and to look at them for you. So please come join our community in prayer. Let us pray, friends. Lord, we thank you for the ability to know that you are with us and surround us with your loving care all the time, even though it can be confusing, God, because sometimes we don't understand when we lift to prayer and nothing happens. It is very confusing to us and sometimes makes us feel disappointed and in despair. But we are thankful that you are there and we can continue to offer you our prayers and our prayers of thanksgiving and joy and our prayers of sorrow and need, O oh God. We've learned so much from your son, and one of the things we have learned is that you are our God, and our need to praise you first shall be in our hearts so that you're not just a genie in a bottle to us, but we praise your name as we lift all of our prayers to you. And we do that this morning, O God. We praise your name for being with us. We praise your name for being our God. We have many that are in, in need today, Lord, and we have some thankful on thanksgivings. Lord, I ask you to be with those people right now that are continuing to grieve loved ones, that have felt loss in their life, and it's very hard for them to move beyond the loss because the loss still feels so profound. And we ask that you be with them and comfort them and help them to know that we too, as human beings, your messengers here on earth, are there to help them, are there to pray with them and be with them. And are, are there, even if we don't know them well, Lord, like I didn't know Anne very well, to just show up, and God, we will be your messengers of peace and joy and love. We lift up several people today, Lord. We lift up Debbie yeah, yeah. and Brian, Brian and Tennant yeah. and Diane yeah. and Betty yeah. and Kay yeah. and Dr. Sandy yeah. and David yeah. and Jimmy yeah. and DJ yeah. and Myra yeah. and Sue and Bonnie, and Frank, and Benny, and Carol, and Nana, and Kim, and Shirley, and Virginia, and Anne. And Lord, we also praise your name for some good results, for cancer screenings. We praise your name for healing, and we praise your name for a young woman who found the job of her dreams, and may you bless her and keep her in that position because it will be challenging, O oh God, but she is up for the challenge to be your servant. Lord, we thank you for giving us this series on James, O oh God, and helping us to dig into your word and in a way that we haven't dug in before. And we're just thankful that you place that on our hearts to be able for us to listen and learn from your word, O oh God. We know that you have taught us this great prayer. We're going to use it more in our lives as example. Let us begin today, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We gather today in prayer and song and listening and responding to God's Word. We respond by the presentation of our tithes and offerings as a gift of worship and gratitude to our God. Let us joyfully offer our time, our treasure, our commitment, and our prayers to our God who is always listening. If you feel led by the Spirit to contribute, there's an offering box in the back of the room and also a box there to support the Presbyterian Home for Children. For you at home, if you feel led by the Spirit to contribute to the mission and vision of Big Cove Presbyterian Church, please go to our website at www.bigcove.org. Let us now share our gifts. Take your 
as gifts of your gratitude for you are the God who bends low to hear the prayers of your people we ask that you multiply these seeds that we sow to teach your people to desire even closer relationship with you through prayer and service may your peace be in our hearts your grace be in our words your love be in our hands and your joy be in our souls. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. We talked about relationships. We talked about relationships with other people. We talked about relationships with our Christ being backwards and forwards, a two-way relationship, right? We need Jesus to be our friend. Hit it, Ralph.
Well, friends, today we had an interesting conversation about prayer through the book of James and how we can lean on God in prayer, but that sometimes we need a sort of a prescription to follow, a recipe to follow, because we tend to, as human beings, rub that side of the genie bottle instead of saying, God, you are amazing. You give us so many blessings every day. Thank you, oh God. Now please hear my prayer. What a beautiful thing to remember, isn't it? It's a beautiful thing to remember. Now friends, go knowing that your Lord loves you, that you carry the light of Christ in you wherever you go. Shine the light. Amen.